Hi everyone. Um, I looked over the videos that I've made and I realized that sometimes I talk about direct and partial variation. There's, there it is in the title. And I'll talk about them sometimes during a video, but um, it gets hard for someone who wants to know specifically about what is direct variation and partial variation. And I don't have any videos that have that directly. <laughs> Pardon the pun. So let's get to it. Let's give two examples here of direct and partial variation and hopefully it will make sense to you very quickly what they are. Um, let's check this one out. Rick's bike rentals charges a flat rate of four dollars per hour. Okay, So he's charging four dollars per hour. In fact, let's graph that right now. Um, here, we'll use blue for Rick's. I'll put a blue circle around Rick's. So it's four dollars per hour. Now remember when you're graphing or making a making a graph. Remember to put the part that is dependent right here. This part here on the y-axis is going to depend on what happens at the bottom here. So four dollars per hour. Well, so money is going to go on the side here, the price, and down here is going to be the time. Okay, and the time, we're going to just do it in hours. So here's one hour, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. As far as money, uh, I suppose we're not talking a lot of money here either, so we can go by ones as well. So one, two, we'll just say all of these go by one. Okay, these all go by one, and because I'm kind of rushing, I'm not going to go and write in all of the numbers along the top and the side, okay? Now, four dollars per hour, that means before you have driven at all, it's going to be zero dollars for Rick's bike rentals. Okay, I'm going to put a dot right there. Okay, this is sometimes called the origin. Now after after one hour, there's one hour, it's going to cost you four dollars. So one, two, three, four. There's four dollars and that's one hour. After one hour, you're paying Rick's bike rentals four dollars. And after two hours, how much would it cost? Well, it would be another four dollars because it's four dollars per hour. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm going to connect these dots. I'm not very good at connecting by freehand, but here is our here is our graph of Rick's bike rentals. Okay, now let's do Jen's bike rentals in yellow. So Jen's bike rentals, they charge $5 at the beginning, right up front, and then you have to pay a dollar for each hour that you're borrowing the bike. So chances are, if you're just renting the bike for an hour, you probably wouldn't want to rent from Jen. But if you were renting for a longer period of time, well, let's see what happens. So if you don't ride the bike at all, if you just say, I'm going to rent it, but you're at zero hours, it's going to cost you five bucks no matter what. After one hour, the price will be one dollar more than the five dollars, so that would be six dollars. Okay, what about two hours? Well, after two hours, go directly above the two, it's going to be six dollars. Let's see, four, five, six. Yes, there we go. And after three hours, it's going to be seven dollars and so on. Okay, I'm going to connect that with a line. Okay, so you can see if you rent it from Jen, you would want to make sure that you're riding that bike more than two hours because even two hours would still be cheaper for Jen's than it would be for Rick's. But if you were just renting for one hour, you might just want to rent from Rick's. But here's the important part. Just so you know, I'm trying not to get off topic here. I want to explain what direct variation is. Direct variation, and I'll see if I can pick a different color, this right here, the blue line, is direct Okay, variation. And the yellow line here is partial variation. Because my writing's not the neatest, I'm just going to put direct and partial here. So what are the characteristics of direct variation? Well, 
First of all, if you're looking at a graph of direct variation, notice it's cutting right through to the origin. This point right here on a, on a Cartesian plane is called the origin. Okay, so it's at this spot right here, at zero. When everything is just zero, that's the origin. Okay, so that is direct variation when it climbs from here and in, in whatever direction. Okay, partial variation is when it does not start at the origin. It'll start somewhere else, usually up here, and it can move in any direction. The slope can be up, positive, or negative, but if it's starting from up here, and not starting at the origin, we call that partial variation, okay? Um, let's think about those two uh, bike rentals when it comes to direct and partial variation. If you were to look at this here, if we were to write an equation, okay? Let's see, I'll pick a maybe red. How does red look? Mm, it's a little hard to see. I'll go with yellow. Okay, so the cost, the cost is right here. The price per hour, this would be Rick's bike rental, the price per hour is right there, and X here would be the hours, okay, would be the hours. If you look back over here, the Y axis was the price, okay, that was the dollars, okay, and along the X axis here, that was the time in hours, okay. so. All you're doing is multiplying the price times the hours. If you had to make an equation for Rick's, you would just say y equals, uh, what was it? I think it's four, four dollars an hour. Okay, so direct variation looks like this, okay? Um, there is something called a constant in front of the x. It's the number, it's, it's well, <laughs> you can also call it the slope or the rate that's being charged. Wow, and the word rate, that's pretty handy because that's truly what it, that's what we would call it in real life too. That is the rate that it costs. Okay, now if you look at gens, again, this is the cost. The y has to do with the cost. The x still has to do with um, the hours. But there's two other letters here, or two other variables. Well, this is the price per hour, or the rate, okay? And over here on the end is a, a number that um, some people would call a constant or a starting point. I'll write that down too. It's, it's our starting point. Let's look at the graph. Okay, so the equation would be, how much does it cost per hour at GENS? I think it was one dollar per hour, plus the starting amount was five dollars, no matter what, okay? So if we look back over here, this is our starting point. See, the five is our starting point, this B on the end here. See how it started here and worked our way up? So partial variation is when you start from a place that is not zero, okay? You start from a place other than zero, and you work your way up like that. And from these two equations, you could come up with, you know, any kind of question. If they said, how much would it be for both rental shops if it was, if you went for 10 hours on a long bike ride? Well, four times 10, that would be $40. I don't know why my pen is not working, but $40. And over here, 10 hours would be, well, 1 times 10 plus 5, it'd be $15. Obviously, you would want to rent from uh, Jen if you were renting for 10 hours, okay? If you were renting for one hour, it would be $4 for Rick, and over here, it would be $6 for Jen's. So if you're renting for only one hour, you might as well rent from this place. But I hopefully, I hope you get the basic idea here that um, direct variation and partial variation are similar but a little bit different and it's very easy to see on the graph and if you look at an equation you'll notice, notice the differences here, how there's a starting point here that's not zero, 
Okay, there's a number here. It can't be a zero. It has to be a number here. Positive or negative? Um, is there anything else? I guess the last thing I should men mention is that um, when you have direct variation, some people call this thing, I know it's the slope, we were calling it the slope before, but or the unit rate, but it can also be called the constant of variation. Constant of variation. I just want to put that word out there in case you see that in any math textbook or maybe your teachers talked about it. And to find the constant of variation, all you have to do, if you were using algebra, it, you would take the y part over here, and I'm going to divide both sides by x. So if you take the y part and divide by the x part, that would give you the constant of variation. So if we were to look back at our graph here, if we took, let's see, Rick's bike rental and we started right here, we looked right here, the y part would be 4 and the x part would be 1. Okay, so the y part would be 4, the x part is 1, so the constant of variation is 4 divided by 1, or just 4. 4 is the constant of variation when it comes to Rick's bike shop. It's also the price per hour. It's just, this is a, <laughs> a more complicated way of saying that, okay? I just wanted to show you this complicated word or expression, just in case you run across it in your math book or your teacher wants you to know about the constant of variation. Um, that's about it. That's all I wanted to tell you about with regards to direct and partial variation. I hope that was enough to help you out with your own math homework, and I wish you luck out there in the math world. Take care, people.